we've always been told, don't open phishing emails, don't click the links inside them, and don't download any attachments in them. But why not? What happens when you do? It doesn't matter if you're in blockchain, if you're in smart contracts, a regular user, or a big company, humans are always the weakest target. Today on Halborn Academy, we're going to look at the hacker side of phishing and what happens when you do click on that link. So the first thing we're gonna do is use this program called MSF Venom. I'm on Kali Linux, which is a Ubuntu distribution that has a lot of different cybersecurity tools pre-installed. And MSF Venom actually makes what's called payloads or virus shell code that can be inserted into different types of languages. You know, we have PowerShell, we have Java, EXEs, but we're gonna use this VBA EXE. So let's make our shell code in the VBA EXE, and I'm gonna use MSF Venom and select dash A for the architecture, and then dash dash platform for Windows, and then dash P, Windows Meterpreter Reverse TCP. What that is, is Meterpreter is a way to get a remote shell to listener back to my command and control PC. I put my command control computer IP address. I put my listening port, which is TCP port 80, some rounds of encoding, and then my VBA EXE, which is gonna be the format of our shell code. So here it is, and it looks like a bunch of text. This is actually a function that's gonna trigger and execute that code to make my shell reach out to the listener and get control of the remote computer. So once I have my shell code created and the macro for the office document, I'm gonna put it inside this Word document here, which is called Halborn Bonus. And it's really enticing to make you wanna open it because it's gonna tell you how much you made for your bonus. Who doesn't wanna click that and open it? So let's go ahead. What I do is I select macro. So we're gonna actually inject our macro code inside of here that was generated by MSF Venom. And you can see here that within the macro, we just place all the functions. And then the next piece I do is I take my payload and I place it inside of the Office document itself. So this is an encoded version of something that the function will recognize within that macro and it runs some VBA. And what it will actually do is reach out to my command and control server, get a hook and insert a meterpreter shell. This will allow me to have remote control of the victim's computer and do some crazy stuff. This template here is black. And just to verify that I actually do have some text in there, I can highlight a word or two or a letter and turn it white really quick. Yep, there it is. Okay, so let's move on. Now, what I have here on the right side is just a temporary email address that's made at temp mail and another one that I have in ProtonMail. The ProtonMail email address is going to be the attacker who's going to send this malicious office document that I just created. I'll call it bonus and type in some text here congratulating the victim for their new bonus and make sure that you open this document and attachment as soon as you can to see how much you've earned. So I'm gonna send this malicious document with the macro attached to it to the victim and we should receive it any minute. Here it is. So let's open it up and see the attachment that's inside. So here's the attachment. Now remember, this is the victim's email. So simulating the victim, I'm going to download this attachment. I'm gonna call it something different just so that we know that this is the one that I had documented from the email. So before we open it, what we're going to do now is set up a listener. On the left side, I have a remote host I'm connected to. This is in AWS and it's at an IP address that's somewhere else hosted in the AWS data center. When I open this up, I'm going to use MSF6, which is the Metasploit framework and run a multi-handler. A multi-handler will be able to listen for connections from victims and get a hook in there through Meterpreter. So to set this up, I type use exploit multi-handler, and then I set my payload to match the one from the MSF Venom, which is Windows Meterpreter reverse TCP. I set my listening host to the IP address of my server, which we see here is 3.139.98.147.
And then I set my listening port, which is port 80. This matches exactly what I did when I created the shell code that was injected inside of this office document. So I hit run, and then I just wait for the victim to open the attachment. So there it is. I got a connection now to the victim's computer from a remote command and control server. I can run shell to get a command line interface into his computer. Like, who am I? You could see it's my computer. And even though I'm inside of a Linux machine, I have a Windows interface. I'm going to get out of here and let's look at a couple modules that Meterpreter comes pre installed with. Let's see some interesting ones. <laughs> How about this webcam snap? This module will actually look for a webcam. And if it sees one, send me the picture. Let's take a picture of the victim. Thumbs up. All right. Now let's see if the picture came in. And there it is. Oh, man, that picture is really bad, but whatever. OK. So besides a webcam, if we wanted to, we could even install a key logger or download files off the remote victim's machine. We could also just upload files that we want to onto the victim's computer. So I'm going to do that right now. And let's create a text file. And I'll just say, I just made this and save it. Now I'll run the upload module. And this is going to take this text file that I just made on the remote server and place it on the victim's computer. So back on the computer, we can see, yep, here's the file. So we are able to upload this through that interpreter hook that was initiated because of the office document being opened. Oh man, that was crazy. Well, I hope it makes you think twice before you click that email next time. I'm Stephen Wabro. I hope this Howborn Academy episode is helpful. Until next time.